All right, friends, next up is Leatherama. Leatherama is really a contentious topic in uh, fantasy and history communities because fantasy really loves Leatherama, but historical enthusiasts really try to downplay it and uh, fight against the leather supremacy that is going on in the fantasy field. Both sides have their own quite uh, understandable arguments. But the principle here is to talk about, first, is it historical and is it practical? I need to mention that leather is a material and not a style of armor. You could make most styles of armor out of leather, so using it as a separate tier of armor seems off to me. You can make leather padding, scale, breastplate, but I do understand the need to simplify things a bit. Let's first address historical part. What I'm wearing is my best attempt at historical leather armor, which can barely fit because it's <laughs> it's meant to be worn uh, without mail. But was leather armor used in Middle Ages Europe? Uh, and uh, if it's used in Europe and not, decides if it was actually used or not. The answer to the question is yes, but we have hard evidence to prove that it was commonly used in Western Europe, but we have hard proof that it was regularly used in Eastern European plains, because it of course connects to the uh, Central Asian plains, where a lot of the nomadic barbarians come from. And what barbarians love more than leather? Well, let's talk about why barbarian or nomadic horse riding peoples love leather arm. Here I'm wearing, of course, leather lamella, which is one of the most practical types of leather arm. But in principle, leather was used by nomadic peoples and less developed peoples because metal armor is made out of metal and making metal is very difficult and you have to be a settled society to make uh, stuff out, out of different types of metal. And the nomads usually aren't famous for their minds. To clarify, the nomadic peoples of Eurasian steppe did have a complex and developed metallurgical culture, from Scythian bronze and gold artifacts, to cool common helmets and complex Mongol metal lamella armor. But as a nomadic people, metal was a high-end commodity and only the wealthiest could afford them. Also, as a warrior herdsman, it was easier for them to buy and trade for their metal arms and jewelry, or more preferably, plunder. So, well, that's why nomadic peoples, when they wanted to get their grabby little hands on metal, they used to attack my people and other settled communities. It's a running historical gag that Caucasus, of course, borders the plains of Europe uh, and Asia. The Caspian uh, and uh, Black Sea plains are above the uh, North Ca Caucasus mountains, and the Caucasus are rich with metals, so those barbarians, be it Scythians, uh, Chimerians, Bulgars, uh, uh, Kumans, uh, Ivchar, Turkic, uh, Mongolic, uh, Russian, different types of barbaric societies usually invaded, but uh, their main objective was to steal metal and uh, usually also used to kidnap blacksmiths too. There's a uh, running uh, his, uh, mythical narrative in uh, uh, Algassian mythology, especially in Georgian mythology, that our forged priests and fro forged gods were kidnapped by the barbaric invaders. But what those horse nomads and uh, barbaric less developed societies have in abundance is, of course, meat and skin. So that's where leather comes in. Leather, of course, is really practical uh, in making armor because it's light. If you harden it, it can be pretty hard. If you make it, of course, thick and hard enough, it can match some lesser metal armor. And uh, you can work it and make it in really different interesting shapes. For example, wee wheat or make a lamellar or scale armor or uh, just make a hardened breastplate. I'm going to get to this later on. 
but in principle it's really useful and really interesting. So those barbaric nomads we know use them and those bar uh, nomadic peoples of course came into contact with Europe. And uh, that's why it's really a uh, contentious topic that was it or was it not used in history. Specifically in regards to Europe, because we know for certain leather was used as mentioned in Central and Northern Asia. Also, of course, every other Asian region such as Rhino Hydamar and Pangolin Scale of East Asia, ancient Lamella remains in the Middle East, Crocodile Hides of Africa and most interesting, the oldest surviving leather scale found in Tutankhamun's tomb. The problem with Europe is that because of its humid and rainy climate, leather had much more difficult time surviving and most of them decayed, so we don't have a lot of examples. We do have some accounts of leather used, but it's relatively scarce. Famously, brigandine armor was confused by Gary Gygax and some early pseudo-historians as studded leather, but actually leather was used as base for plates to be riveted on. We can see similar styles in Central and East Asia. Practically speaking, leather is useful material for armor craft, especially in combination with other armor to offset each other's deficit. Combining gambits of male and leather balances each other's weaknesses. Combining these three attributes of padding that absorbs uh, bludgeoning damage, male that is impervious to slashing damage, and leather which is great against piercing damage. If you worked with leather, even needles have a hard time going through them, and when you harden them, uh, it becomes even more difficult to go through. It gives you a quite a quite good protection against your enemy's arsenal. On the other hand, without the mail, it also can be protective for uh, a, for example, skirmisher archer who fights against other archers with lighter arrows. It would be great uh, for that. It would be great for a primitive uh, battle with less complex uh, and uh, Mm, powerful piercing and bludgeoning weapons and so basically what I'm trying to demonstrate is that yes leather armor wasn't as prevalent in Western Europe but it was pretty prevalent and useful in the um, Eastern Europe, Central Asia, Africa, um, Americas, other parts of the world. You can harden leather and you can use it uh, multiple layers of thick uh, leather coats which is uh, as flexible as uh, and protective as five or even ten layers of linen uh, cloth canvas. But as we all know, uh, leather armor is the most popular in fantasy media and in fantasy games like Dungeons and Dragons and other like video games and movies. My theory is why it's so popular in uh, Western media is that leather armor is much more easier and cheaper to produce and uh, design for a costume designers than making male armor or something or another. So, in TV and movie, costume designers went wild with leather, a material they are familiar with, using their own creativity and spitting on the face of historical authenticity and basic practicality, thus tarnishing the humble leather in the nerd communities. I personally like leather. It's a versatile and beautiful material to work with, but get very annoyed at the impractical nonsense I sometimes see on screen. Lately, some designs seem to be at least practical and potentially useful. Next video, I'll show my attempted fantasy leather arm to see if it can be useful and show off as well. Thank you for watching, please stick around if you like what I do here and help out by liking and sharing. Also comment your thoughts, all feedback is greatly appreciated. Thanks and take care.